you know, one of the reasons we're here is to help you with your home voiceover studio. I mean, that's how we started this whole darn thing. That was the thing. whole point of this thing when we started it out. Who's going to want to watch a show on home voiceover studios? It's the voiceover studios answer to car talk. That's right. That's where it came from. And that was in 2011, and now it's July 2018. <laughs> so I guess people want to watch stuff about home voiceover Amazing. studios. Uh, and they want to learn about home voiceover studios. And their home voiceover studios break, where they get buzzes and hums and all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, guys, there's only two places on the face of the earth where you can go to get the expertise you need to get your home voiceover studio the way it's supposed to sound. The way it's supposed to sound. Whistle. The way it's supposed to sound. Why am I not catching on to what you're throwing down there? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not on the what same... It's sup- what it's supposed to sound like is whistle. Oh. Now, okay, does that make sense? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Say it's my acronym. Take it for what it's worth. Oh, it's an acronym. Oh, yes. like whistle. God. <laughs> what it's supposed to sound like. Like whistle. <sighs> anyway. Okay, now I'll remember that. You'll never have to do that again. again whistle. Bl- you would, I've been saying whistle. that for weeks, and you're like, <laughs> now not- you figured it really? out. Really? Where have I been? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what is it supposed to sound like? But the thing is, is there's only two guys that know how to do it. This gentleman here, and hopefully me. You, you know. always need a backup. So you got two people to choose from. You find me over at georgethetech.com, and you find Dan over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. That's right. And uh, it makes it easy because we can teach you how to do it right from soup to nuts, from alpha to omega. From, from USB to Thunderbolt 3. That's right. And, and we'll teach you the difference between those two. Uh, and if things go wrong and we want to be able to hear what your sound sounds like, all you have to do is drop off a sample of your audio. At, uh, it's 25 bucks at homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you're not confident with what it sounds like, well, I'll tell you what happens when people send me the audio. It's like, hey, did you know this was in there? We'll talk about that in a second. But again, go to... Uh, GeorgeTheCheck.com. You can leave me a sample or you can head over to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com mm-hmm. and uh, click on the Specimen Collection Cup. <laughs> it is literally there and that will take you right to the Dropbox. Your cup runneth over. It friend. does. Anyway, enough commercial stuff. Uh, we'd like to talk about tonight about soundproofing. Now, somebody sent me a sample, as I was just mentioning mm-hmm. before, uh, of a booth that they had, a custom built booth. Yep. And at the end, she, you know, she sends me some silence. All of a sudden, I hear this sound. At the end. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh-huh. it sounds like a dog's claws on a wooden floor, which right. is unmistakable. Yeah. And especially I, when you have a couple dogs. Dog, so espe- yeah, especially. Does. So she sends me a picture of the booth, and sure enough, there is a... There's a, there's a crate right there with a dog bed in it. And she's like, you're right. It was... And I'm like, I'm sorry... If I'm wrong, tell me. But yeah, are yeah. there, is there a dog walking up to the booth as you're finishing At that test? At least one dog. And she's like, yes, there was. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> I, I, my hearing isn't gone at my, at my late age. And, uh, but it raises a problem. Yeah. She's, in a, she's in a soundproof booth. Right. Why is there the sound of a dog's foot <laughs> during her audio? That's a good question. Well, Did she have a microphone outside the booth? No, I said, is the door back? open? No, is the door open? No, yeah. the door's not open. Okay. Is there a seal around the door? Hmm. And she's like, well, I know there isn't. The guy that built it had to leave and he never put anything in there. Oh. Or he put it in too loose and she's like, well, the door right. doesn't, doesn't close all the way. Uh-huh. Well, if the door doesn't close on your soundproof booth, what you basically have is just a booth. It's a hole. You have a soundproof booth with a hole. Oh, in it. That's right, but it's not so soundproof. A small gap around your door, or a gap in a window, whatever it is. If you have a gap, it can only be like a millimeter or so. But if it goes like around the perimeter of the door or more, um, more is that possible? Whatever. <laughs> um, if it goes around the door, it's if it's, it's like more having... than a perimeter. Then it, you're just totally out <laughs> in another universe, <laughs> gone into another, it's dimension, another dimension, literally. Um, then it's just like it's like having a hole like this big right in the middle of the wall. Right. I mean, it, it's it's a big deal. And the thing is, small gaps like cracks in the door let through higher frequency sounds. 
And that may sound so logical it's impossible, but that's kind of how it works. Like a, a an opening acts as like a noise fil- a filter. Right. So a door that's heavy will stop a lot of the lower sounds, but a crack in the door will let through the higher sounds. Right. And that's why you hear that sound through the through the crack that's in the right. door. And she was mighty embarrassed by it too. But well, the, the thing is, is the door doesn't close all the way and there's not a proper seal on it. That totally short circuits the idea of soundproof. She and shouldn't be embarrassed because no. honestly, I, I know what booth she has and we're not going to say where it came from. That wouldn't be fair. But the booth that she has, I've seen studios with a door that costs twice as much of, as, as this entire booth. And I'm not kidding. No, there I are mean, studio doors that cost... Six to eight thousand uh, dollars. There was one installed at the uh, Voiceover Lab here in Hollywood, in West, in uh, well, not Hollywood, at, at the, not well, Hollywood. At the SAG After Midtown. Door. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's SAG After at Wilshire at the Tarpons. Right, and these these studio doors went in. Mm, was it 2011 when that place was built? Now I'm starting to forget. 2010, 2011, and that studio, the one door in their solo booth, never quite sealed right. It hmm. and it. <laughs> It was a pain because, yeah, it was extremely heavy. It had, like, lead shot in it. It weighed, like, 300 pounds. But the seal never had a perfect seal. So it had somewhere along that along that seal, it let some sound in. Mm. And so it filtered out everything except you could hear high-frequency sound. You'd, right. You wouldn't hear voices. You'd hear more like, you'd hear that through the crack in the door. It was really strange. So anybody that was out in the classroom area, or the control room area, they had to be quiet, which made it very difficult to have someone in the solo booth right. recording while there was anything else going on. And eventually they had those doors replaced. Well, the second half of that story is yes. brand new doors went in, right? Yeah. I get an email from uh, the lab administrator, Eric, saying, uh, we got new doors in and we still hear uh, voices through the seam of the door of the new door i was like are you kidding me right and um i went i was over there for something and the new doors have a magnetic seal right so they have like this strip of magnet that goes all the way around <coughs> right and you would think that's going to be a perfect seal right so i'm running my finger down the seal along the edge and all of a sudden i hit something sharp mm-hmm. with my finger and i'm like what's that i pick it i pull it off and it sticks to my finger and it is a teeny weeny metal shaving like when they were putting the screws, a little ch- that little chunk of metal stuck to the magnet. Creating a gap. And created a little gap on either wow. side of the magnet that was probably, you know, a couple inches long. I took the little chunk of metal out and I was like, how's that? <laughs> it was like, I mean, it, the detail, devil's in the, basically the story of that is the devil's in the details. Right. I mean, the littlest thing can let sound in. Right. Another time I'll tell you about the sandwich in the wall story. Oh, wow. Not That's a, not my story. It's somebody else that somebody else told me. Probably not as bad as the cat in the wall story. No, it doesn't smell that bad. We've heard that one before. But it's fascinating yeah. what that sandwich did. But when it comes to soundproofing, a proper seal on a door is essential. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and uh, people don't realize that. It's like, well, just close the door. Even if you're in a closet, it helps to put a rubber seal on that and a, a proper uh, seal at the bottom. At the, yeah, a sweep yes, or a, sweep. a threshold. Uh, on the, a sweep on the threshold. You can actually buy magnetic, or I'm sorry, not magnetic, automatic sweeps. They're right. called automatic door There's bottoms. A little thing in it when the door closes, it closes mm-hmm. up and it lowers this this and little. Those are available for any door. That's you can right. actually retrofit them onto your existing doors. You don't have to replace mm. them, or it's it's not very hard to install. If you have the opportunity to have a double door scenario, that's what we have in this studio. There's an exterior door and an interior door. That's even better. Right. That's to me better than one single door. Because first of all, it's a lot less expensive to buy two sound damp, not I'm not going to call them soundproof, but two like exterior grade doors. Right. They're going to have seals, thresholds and everything. But you put two of them together, you get much better performance than just one door. Right. And if one seal isn't perfect, you got another one to back up the first one. Wow. So. so if that doesn't prove that we know more about home voiceover studios than anybody on the planet. You don't need proof, do you? Well, maybe you, maybe you do. Maybe, maybe you think we're full of... Yeah, maybe, maybe. Let us know. Anyhow. Let us know down in the in the comments. Yes. Your YouTube comments. Let us know what, what we're yeah. for.